Rapanada everyone and welcome to my 1000 subscriber special of sorts. A theory I call the puppeteer. This theory has been floating around on the internet for a while now, so I will try and give you my sources when necessary. However, I have added a lot of my own thoughts over the last few months. And now this theory is finally ready. Now of course, it would make sense if you had watched my other videos, especially the ones on screen right now. But for the purpose of this being a standalone video, I'm going to actually explain a lot more than I would need to. So even if you are not familiar with your Hollow Knight lore anymore, I will get you a bit up to speed. This video is not to be taken with a grain of salt. Take this with the entire Sifto salt mine, the largest underground salt mine in the world. I took my time and went through everything on Team Cherry's website, everything I could find on Reddit, in the comments to my videos and rewatched every Mossback video two times because I am basically the equivalent of what you get when you drive to McDonald's and ask for ice cream and they say I'm sorry but the ice cream machine is broken and only uploads four times a year but we got something else, one of those cookie things and you're like okay I'll take one because you know it's cheap, it does the job and you know what they say in der Notfrist der Teufel fliegen now let's start with the theory, but first, a bit of backstory though. In Silksong we place Hornet, the princess and protector of Hellonest, the kingdom in Hollow Knight. She gets captured in the beginning of Silksong and gets brought to Farloom, the kingdom in Silksong. Hornet is the daughter of the Pale King and Hera the Beast. Hera herself lived in Deepnest, which was inherited by the Weavers, until they left and went to what was their original home, Farloom. Not a lot is known about the Weavers, and in the footage we have seen so far there have been loads of hints at them, but we haven't straight up seen one. We've only ever seen one, one time, in Hollow Knight, after going into the Weavers' den. We don't know where it actually went, but it sure as hell didn't want any business with the knight. Now for this part, remember that Hera was called the Beast, that Hornet is bound by her lineage and that she uses a lot of silk when fighting. We will get back to all of this. Now let's get into some basic stuff about Farloom. Farloom is struck by a curse. Now this curse itself is kinda a mystery, but we do know a few things. One, it makes bugs all damp and hostile. And two, that's basically all we can say for sure. But there are a lot of more things we can say about Farloom itself. Firstly, it is a very religious place, with pilgrimages taking place and a shining citadel on top of the kingdom. We also see a religious cult wearing masks with what either seems to be a bell or a ball of silk or, as I think, both. They are the people who captured Hornet and need her for something. We will get back to that as well. Secondly, Farloom is an inversion of Hellonest. It's all about ascending and not about descending anymore. And as Hellonest tried to bury its dark secrets deep underground, Farloom builds itself on the sacrifices it made. This is something I talked about in this video right here where I kinda explained why I think that Farloom has got a pretty clear-cut hierarchy, in which the deeper parts, like the deep dogs, quite literally are a cursed working class, and the higher parts live in some kind of twisted version of a so-called paradise. The deep dogs could have some sort of crystal peaks lore, in which they mine something, in this case probably ore, which might then be transported up through these pipes into the gilded city or shining citadel. Then those ores could be used to create the bell scene literally everywhere in the game. But why is this bell cult all over the place and why bells? We will get to that later. Last but not least, the kingdom is quite literally built on bones, or at least the deceased eventually end up at the bottom of the kingdom. This is similar to what we saw in games like Monster Hunter World. This is supported by the starting town of Silksong being literally called Bone Bottom, and the Forest of Bones probably being somewhere at the bottom of Farloom, if my map video from a few weeks ago actually turns out to be somewhat accurate. If this kingdom is really built on slavery and bones and death, 
It just drives home the point of the quite literal hierarchy of the kingdom even more. Okay, now let's finally get to the main theory. The curse of Farlum is controlled by the puppeteer. Now, what does that mean? Well, Farlum is a kingdom cursed by Silk and Song. I'm sure that this refers to the Weavers. As we see from the Weaver Song charm, the Weavers are connected to Silk and Song. Now, it could be the case that the Weavers were captured in Farlum and forced to play this perpetual song. What does this song do? Well, it allows the people from the top of the kingdom to control everyone below them, similar to how a puppeteer controls the puppets. Now we can actually see instances of this happening. Number one is the mechanical ant that is probably found in the Forest of Bones. It shows silk threads attached to its limbs. Since it just awoke, it's probably controlled by someone who doesn't want to let Hornet pass, and the ant itself is most likely not sentient, or at least not anymore, and it's not in control of its body. The second time we see this is at some enemies from the demo. I actually noticed this back in 2019 when the demo first came out, but my little Austrian schnitzel brain just thought this was some kind of artifact or visual bug, which will be fixed before the game comes out. But it is in fact another hint at someone pulling the strings from up above. Now, not everyone is affected by the curse. We know of several bugs that are seemingly unaffected and try to get by in this cursed kingdom. That's where the third and last part comes in, which I blatantly stole from Mossback. The bells and the cult. If a song is played and everyone who hears it becomes a slave, how do you keep yourself from hearing the song? Possibility number one is to have something that cancels noises. For example, Raycon headphones! With Raycon headphones you can actually pretend to have a sponsor, but no one actually sponsors my videos, so that's kinda sad. The other option, however, is to create your own badass music, but since Farloom citizens are a bunch of hipsters stuck in the 19th century, they are into bell music. This could be because they want to drown out the song. Every friendly NPC we have seen so far has had some kind of instruments around them. However, we also see some enemies who have instruments on them which seem to be hostile, apart from the cult of course. This is a problem with the theory. Another problem is why should the cult be this extreme if they are trying to save the kingdom from the original song? It could be the case that they kinda got corrupted, but still will do anything to achieve their goal. The mass production of bells could be their way to drown out the song. They could capture Hornet to help create a different Silk song, a song that drowns out the one from Hornet's ancestors. However, the bell cult could also just support the song that is played in the first place. And the bells could also just help the Silk song reach into the further reaches of the kingdom. If there were two possible songs to be played, this could also get Hornet to choose whom to help, the cult or the puppeteer, or neither of them. Why would you help the puppeteer though? We'll get into that later. The cult might have tried to place these giant bells all around the kingdom, bells which ring perpetually to drown out the song, but the evil of this kingdom has placed seals of binding on the bells, stopping them from being played and therefore corrupting a large part of the kingdom, only leaving out those with strong will, who are also still helped by all the other bells lying around, which helps them keep their composure. The cult could of course still be just part of the puppeteer's followers, so I am quite unsure of this part of the field, but again, sift the salt mine, remember? So basically, everyone who either is weak in mind and or doesn't have an instrument of their own is subject to being controlled. Now another question is, why? Why enslave a whole kingdom? The easy answer is that the ones from the citadel, the puppeteers or the puppeteer, just try to have a lot of power. Now this doesn't sound satisfying at all though, and there's a better explanation. Now let's look at Farlum's Folly, the poem we read at the start of Silk Song. They see your beauty, so frail and fine. They see your peace, woven of faith and toil. They forget your heart, bound in slumber and servitude. When you wake, they shall see your truth, a beast's nature. 
bear to all. I went into detail on this poem in this video right here, but to sum up, there seems to be a reason why Falun is under a curse. Because if someone, in this case Hornet, were to wake up the kingdom, someone would awake according to the poem. Now this is where this gets really interesting. The true form of whomever this is directed at seems to be something we should be afraid of, something scary and dark, something long forgotten. The peace of this kingdom is woven by faith and toil. The faith probably refers to the cult, and the toil could refer to, for example, the workers of the deep dogs. This of course kinda contradicts some points are made about the cult, but this could also just be because, at the time of being infected with the curse, they were trying to fight the song with this cult, and are just trapped in this idea of freeing the kingdom, similar to how the workers are still working on the supposed bell creation. However, the more I think about it, the more unsure I am about this part. If Hornet is captured by the bell cult to free the kingdom and ring the bells, why would the bell cult fight her? They might have gone insane or something. Or their way of saving the kingdom would actually be something harming Hornet, because they don't believe that there is another way. For example, sacrificing her in the same way the weavers are supposedly sacrificed to keep the kingdom asleep. However, this is not a huge part of this theory. Still, if you have thoughts on your own, or if I have missed something, let's discuss it in the comments. I read every single comment you guys and girls post, and you might be able to help me out with this part of the theory. Anyway, this darkness, this beast's nature bare to all, kind of reminds me of something. Hera the Beast. I mentioned her a few minutes ago. She stayed behind as all the weavers left Hellonest, so it is pretty likely that the beast's nature refers to another weaver. For example, some kind of king of weavers, or even Hornet. However, since this poem is referring to Falum, this entity might be deeply interwoven with the entirety of Falum. Maybe it even is the kingdom as a whole, or a sleeping danger, able to spread if enabled to, like the void from Hollow Knight spread through Hellonest at the end of the game. It could also be an ancient weaver fast asleep. The weavers do seem to have some kind of secrets, but I don't know what that could be yet. Now, let's take a look at who wrote this. It's Conductor Romino. Conductors control songs that are played. A conductor could in this case be the literal puppeteer or at least the one able to carry out such a plan. However, the way he writes this poem is concerning. This poem is called Falum's Folly, after all. Folly implies that he is either feeling ashamed or scared, or just straight up schadenfreude. The more I think about this poem, the more I feel like Romino actually isn't the asshole I thought he was in this video. I think Romino was at first on board with whatever his superiors made him do, putting this kingdom in a state of perpetual slumber in order to keep something dangerous from awakening. However, at some point something might have changed. He might have noticed how this kingdom is about to collapse, and how the citizens of the citadel enrich themselves on the cost of the cursed bugs. This poem could very likely be from someone who isn't conducting the song anymore. Someone who wants to warn the few sentient beings left in Falum about the kingdom's dark secrets. Someone who is mad at everyone, including himself. But if he really stepped down from carrying out the song, who stepped in? While I cannot say who is in charge of conducting when the game starts, and even if Romino doesn't want to conduct the song anymore, he could still be forced to, I can think of one character who seems to be the type to carry out her so-called duty. Lace. Lace is focused on killing Hornet, who will try to lift the kingdom's dark secrets. Lace is also seen conducting these white butterflies, and they do seem to have a strength about them, being able to break a seal of binding and awakening Hornet's powers in the intro. So controlling the butterflies might be just as important as controlling the weavers, as both of them seem to have a connection with Silk. And. Lace seems egotistical, she seems full of herself, she seems like someone who is blindly following a path created by her lineage, or something similar, 
and still believing she is an independently thinking being. She seems obsessed. Of course, I don't know if this is true, but she seems to have a deep hatred inside of her and her contacting in the demo could hint at her wanting to step into the footsteps of Romino because she can apparently carry out this duty without any second thoughts because she's an asshole. To sum up, Hornet gets captured by crazy bell dudes, escapes and will awaken bells to drown out the silk song, Maze by the Puppeteer. Of course, this theory leaves a lot of questions open and a lot of so-called evidence could contradict itself. However, I think at least some of the core parts of this theory don't sound bad at all. Who is this puppeteer? Is it Romino? Is it going to be Lace? Or are they just simply the ones carrying out the curse? Is the puppeteer necessarily bad? Or is it a pale king's situation, where the intentions are good but the overall plan sucks void ass? Is the bell cult friendly, or like Neil Smith Oro, a huge dick? These are all questions which still need to be answered. This has been it for this video, please leave your opinions in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Mossback. Farewell, my fellow hair beings.